All right, so welcome to the live stream Q&A for our Center for Academic Retention Enhancement. My name is Terrell Williams. I'm the Program Coordinator for Diversity and Outreach here at the Office of Admissions. We have a panel of students, and we're going to let them introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Alexis. Um, I am from Miami, Florida, and I am a junior here. Hi, I'm Ashley. I'm majoring in criminology. I am a first year, and I am an HSU, BSU. Um, I'm a care guide and delegate, and I'm in LAE. Hi, my name is Rose Antoine. I'm from Fort Myers, Florida. I'm majoring in social work, uh, and this is my senior year. Um, I'm involved in the Caribbean Student Association, the Institute for Family Violence Studies, um, the Student Association of Social Workers, and that's just a few names. Yes, hello. My name is Kim Dawkins. I'm a senior here at Florida State. Um, from Atlanta, Florida, and some artists I'm part of, like, really vary, but I kind of separate students by the Church of the Government Association. Cool. So we're going to start with a very basic question, like what is CARE? So most people always ask, like, what is the CARE Summer Bridge Program? What is the CARE Department at Florida State? So CARE is basically a department on our campus that is designed to provide access for our first generation population of students, as well as give them programming and services during their time here at Florida State. So the CARE Summer Bridge programs basically helps with their transition to Florida State. But they do remain in care for the remaining time that they're here at Florida State. And there are different amenities and different um, requirements for our care department. So I'll start off with a very simple question. <laughs> what convinced you or what led you to select Florida State? So anybody can start that. Um, for me, I think I always had some kind of like feeling that FSU was like my home. And so when I was exploring like what colleges to go to and where to where I wanted to like take the next step in my life, especially since I've never been away from family, um, I just always like resonated with FSU. And then when I heard about the care program and like the other type of family offers, even though you're away from home, it was just like unparalleled. And so I knew that I couldn't pass up that opportunity. Um, for me, I toured multiple schools and when I came to FSU, I really felt um, I'd say welcomed and at home because a lot of a lot of the people that I met while I was touring were like, oh, what can we do for you? Here's what FSU has to offer. Here's how we can make you like a part of our community. With a lot of the other schools I went to, it was kind of like, oh, you should be lucky that you're here. And like, uh, this is what you can contribute versus like, I feel FSU was more like, we're going to take you in and we're going to mentor you and we're going to build you up because like you're destined for greatness. So it was just like them voting on us and. Yeah, I would say that same sentiment. I actually only applied to Florida State just because I felt like I was just fell in love with the school and I was touring this university in comparison to other schools. And then I didn't really know much about the care department or program, um, but I literally somebody mentioned it to me when I told them I wanted to go to Florida State because I told them my mom didn't go to college. Like you ever heard about care? And I remember that night I just looked Google FSU care, and uh, this is the person that popped up. And I mean, this has changed my life. I would say too, like I didn't really know too much about the care program. I heard about it from like a friend of a friend. And I was like, okay, I'll try it out. Um, I'll see. And I kind of was like selling myself short. Like I didn't think I was gonna like go to a big school or anything. And then I got in and I was like, whoa, like, okay, like cool. And I saw like care like saw something in me, obviously. Um, so when I came and I toured, I was like, wow, this is like for sure like my place and where I can see myself for the next four years. Cool. So we're gonna have a segue into our next <laughs> question until we have some questions in our chat. So Going back to why you selected Florida State, can you talk about how the Care Summer Bridge program helped you with your transition as a first generation student? And can you briefly describe and briefly discuss your summer bridge experience? Talk about what you did during that seven weeks that you were here. Talk about your particular, basically your journey from that particular seven weeks into your first fall semester on campus. Oh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I, I was like really, really nervous. At first, I had been like super excited for college and all that stuff, and I was getting everything ready. And then I remember the night before our first day, I was crying in the hotel with my dad, and I was like, I can't do this. Like, let's go home. Like, no. And he's like, it's going to be fine. And as soon as I like, stepped on campus, like, I never felt differently. So, like, I read, like, my one best friend, like, I made, like, my ambassador group, and that was, like, great. And then just, like, Everything that I learned and they they put me, not put me through, but like um, like the engaging like opportunities that we did like care summer were like all helpful. And I still see myself like using some of those opportunities now, like as a junior. Not to mention that I met like amazing people that I still talk to to this day and are like my best, best friends. So 
I think for me, uh, my summer bridge program was like very recent because I'm a first year. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think obviously, like um, I think it helped a lot in terms of knowing the campus and knowing your resources, knowing what the school has to offer and what it can help you through. Because like she said, it's very hard to transition from being with your family to going to a totally different city that's oh, very far from most of us and not having a support system up here. And so the summer bridge program like allowed you to feel like what care is and how it supports you, how it helps you and how it can just like um, support you during your, just your four years, not just the first year. And I think um, going back to the first question, um, I the first time I toured FSU was through the FGen to FSU program that care offered. And so just knowing that they want you to come to FSU, they want you to realize like what the possibilities are and they want you to know that like it's okay to like branch out and like not be afraid of like change. Yeah, our care summer. <laughs> <laughs> summer bridge keeps us busy, and I didn't appreciate that my um, freshman summer until like I was put into fall, and I was like, oh my gosh, there's so much going on. Like we're so overwhelmed with everything, mm -hmm. and so it really serves as um, like a buffer experience uh, to like show you how busy you can get, how to manage time, because we have a lot of like workshops for time management, money management, and financial literacy, um, leadership, so learning like different leadership qualities, and that's another thing that I really learned from my Summer Bridge experience. Uh, we make sure to like harp in on like leadership and how uh, you like you have potential to be great on this campus, mm -hmm. and like care, we have this thing where like, <laughs> listen, care like we our leaders like that's it like we like to take charge of um different spaces because minorities usually don't have that opportunity to and since we're in that space too they make sure to like make sure to like instill that in us so uh leadership um time management financial literacy like those are all skills that i learned throughout my summer bridge experience and they prepared me so well so i'm a senior now <laughs> it worked <laughs> yeah. i i completely agree with Rose that i, I don't think i've like appreciated until my junior senior year when like I experienced this, like orientation, like care has an onset orientation. Mm -hmm. Just the little things that, you know, in my care summer, I didn't even realize were little things that were imprinted on like my experience. Like I circle SJ and like the holocaust they were given and like that's not something that I was empowered to be a part of. Like mm -hmm. just so many community and so many involved. It's like seeing those people they were all members of care. Like it wasn't like, oh, this and that. It was like, oh, he's like president of this organization and also doing this stuff and he's also in care. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, if they can do that, like I can also do that. And also my summer experience, the biggest thing for me, I was like, you know, you get a chance to start over really in college. So I was like, I'm gonna come out of my comfort zone. And I remember going to like one person, but like, hey, I'm Caleb. And like that person's like my best friend now. And I think to think about all those experiences, like I always wanted to go to Florida State and I'm just glad I'm able to do it through a program that like has truly invested in me mm -hmm. and my success and the success of every member of the department. Gotcha. Appreciate it. So we're starting to get some questions into our chat now. Um, so, <laughs> uh, uh, so I'm going to ask this one because it kind of ties into that question you just asked. Like, what type of activities did you do during the Summer Bridge program? Um, so we mentioned about like being a possible care ambassador at that particular time. You all have that particular experience of being on the older end, on the best of the junior senior year. You just had your first year here. So what type of things that you do, did you do during your particular first summer here on campus? Okay, um, Rose actually hit a lot of them. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's a lot of financial literacy and the orientation, like everything. They kept us very busy, like <laughs> very busy, I mean, very busy. Um, so every weekend, they would wake us up very early and they would just take us to, like a whole day about financials, about learning how, about imposter syndrome, about so many different things that you're going to encounter here because you're on your own and like you're growing out of like being without your parents. And so like, yeah, financial literacy, budgeting, um, imposter syndrome, like feeling, mm -hmm. knowing, understanding your health and understanding how to take care of yourself, just different things like that. So I can speak on it from like both ends because mm -hmm. I was uh, like my freshman summer and then I've just recently been a care ambassador. Mm -hmm. um, so as a care ambassador, we have like a uh, like, different categories to hit. So we just made sure that our students were really well, uh, well rounded. We had a uh, cultural and so cultural uh, exposure, um, diversity and inclusion, financial literacy, business and professional development, uh, study skills, um, mental health was very important for us because a lot of times um, us as like 
of minority first generation students. Mm-hmm. We don't have like those communities to kind of build mm-hmm. off of and talk about our mental health. So um, we tried to make sure that our students were very comfortable speaking about the possibility of having mental health issues. Mm-hmm. Imposter syndrome, we had the counseling center come out. We had um, Chaw come out and give uh, health presentations. Mm-hmm. We also had the career center. So like CARES very much so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> CARES very much so about like connecting our students to like the whole of yeah. campus and uh, the FSU community. Mm -hmm. So we tried to make sure that different departments who were uh, experts in their field were there to guide our students and to let them know about the different um, things that they might encounter. And we had the Resilience Project come out too, which is very big uh, because our students have a lot of resilience and we want to make sure they hone in on that. And I was actually featured on the Resilience Project. You saw my cartoon face. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know when you came in, you basically saw that my picture was on there. A lot of students were sitting the picture like, hey, Mr. Williams, that's you. Um, So moving on to our next question um as a care student do you have the opportunity to study abroad i don't know if one of you already had the opportunity to study abroad if you can talk about that experience if not can you talk about the process of studying abroad here at florida state so i've never had the opportunity to study abroad but i know for a fact that care like being a part of the care department allows you like opportunities for financial support in terms of like global scholars or i'm assuming other programs so i know that's definitely something that i've had friends who are in care 16 that where like London, all these places, I'm like, it's so amazing. Yeah. And uh, Carol was able to like financially support them mm-hmm. um, within those areas. I'm in the process of studying abroad, but like, not now, obviously. But like, <laughs> I think I'm studying abroad like in the summer. Okay. Um, so I've already like done my application and stuff, and I haven't done like everything, but I definitely know that um, it's definitely possible. One of my friends <laughs> is Care 17, and she's in Spain right now. So can you talk about the oh, can you talk about the location you're going to? Oh, I'm going to be location? going to the communications program in Florence. So um, FSU, like international programs, has. Um, there are different locations and they have different programs. It's like some are broad curriculum, so you can do anything no matter your major. And for me, I'm actually going to be completing my short internship in Trinidad and Tobago, so I'm very excited about that in spring. Um, but CARE definitely motivates us to study abroad. We actually had a GBM, a general body meeting, this past summer with all the freshmen talking about um, studying abroad, and we had one again in fall. So it's very <laughs> much so something that we try to uh, make sure the students are aware of and they have that opportunity. Uh, there's also different scholarships that CARE students uh, qualify for, depending on the program that you want to go to. There's global scholars. Um, there's also, the field and scholarship. Uh, we work hand in hand with ONF, the Office of National Fellowship, you know, fellowships, international programs, your different colleges and stuff. Yeah. So, we definitely have the opportunity. Yeah. Cool. So, I guess I have some I guess, admissions questions that I can answer possibly. Somebody asked, um, can they submit test scores after the November 1st deadline? Yes, you can. However, you would need to have one test score on file by next Friday, and you make the retest on November 2nd. There's a test date for December 7th as well as December 14th, which are the last test dates that we will be accepting for the fall 20 school year or as well as summer 20 school year. So make sure you have at least one on file. We do super scores. So the more time you take the test, it's only going to help you in the long run. Do you have application status check? <laughs> yeah, do you have application status check so you can still report your test scores. If you're applying to CARE on the CARE application, there will be a section that says test scores and it will give you a list of all the test dates from basically now until December. If you select one of those boxes, we would not review your application until you receive all of those test scores. There will be, there will be a reminder that goes out to students to basically uh, update their test scores um, once they receive their final results. Cool. So diving back into your questions. <laughs> um, let's see what we find. Oh, so somebody said, hi, I'm currently <laughs> finishing my care application. And I just wanted to know, can you guys talk, tell me more about things that affected you the most with care? Like one thing care has done for you that has made the most impact. That may be a very loaded question, um, but you just kind of dive into like what care has done for you or. You know. I think for me, the, the summer had the most impact when I think I reflect on it mm-hmm. because I, I can remember just thinking Dr. Stark reminding us of like, care's got you. Mm-hmm. And that's something that he says every single day, something that he was like remind us. Mm-hmm. And you know, other than like this point when I need him the most for like my senior year trying to figure out like admissions and classes, like he truly showed that. And that was something that I didn't, you know, I didn't get from anywhere else but this department. And um, that's something that I feel like is gonna carry on with me at least four years ago. I'm gonna say like piggyback off that. I would say that too, like just from the beginning, it was always care as a family, mm-hmm. care as a family, we all have each other's backs. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why I had such a good experience like Summer C because I never was like worried about like 
what I was like not missing out on, but like, you know, not being with my family and that kind of thing. Like I felt that here and I feel like that's why I got so close with my like care friends mm -hmm. and that the way that we are with each other because of that instillment of we are family, we are family. I think um, mm -hmm. I the Summer Bridge Program is like a main, like a huge thing, especially like how it can support you because I think as, as like he said, as soon as you step into FSU, you can be the person that you want to be and you can go out of your comfort zone. You don't have to be the person that you were in high school or mm -hmm. before that. And so I think coming in, it was, it was always about like, you're like all grouped together. You all live in the same building. So it's like, you're always together. And so you build these relationships that are like, <laughs> like not anything you've ever had in high school and so you get super close to your friends and just like having that support and like they're just different types of relationships or different levels of relationships mm -hmm. because everyone at fsu has something going for them mm -hmm. they have something they want to be they have a goal they have a dream and so everybody being motivated and just being together pushing together and like aspiring to do things together is just a different level yeah yeah and for me it was um my mental health really uh care focus is a lot on like making sure that like you are good like yeah. whether it be mental uh physical social professional all around and for me um i kind of like neglected my mental health for a while and it was connecting with the different staff that uh kind of made themselves available for us um a lot of times you might not see like staff in different like departments but like care like our staff is like in your face like yeah. you yeah. are required to like meet with the coaches you're required to um be in like different uh, programs and stuff just so for like your betterment and so I connected with SSS Scope and I was able to work with the advisor and they kind of like sat me down and had a real talk with me like you need to go to the counseling center <laughs> and you need to deal with like these different things that are impacting you like all around because mental health isn't just like one thing it impacts like all of it so like the academics and everything so I definitely have to like sit down and get real with myself on that and that's because of care yeah Especially as it relates to transition, I think mm -hmm. it's because like college transition between high school to college between like everything, especially as well as some of the other conversations that I've never had yeah. before I come to Florida State, and those are things that the care department really helped me navigate. So I guess we have another admissions question. It says, if I apply to care, do I have to follow through with the housing and classes even if I choose not to? I'm not assuming attend um, care. So with care, so you're applying directly to the care summer bridge program. And then let's say you will actually get your decision for care. You will be reviewed for care first. And then our decision that you will receive your decision for admission. If you're admitted to care, you will receive the care participation agreement as well as the next steps for care. If any particular point you say, hey, I don't want to be a part of care. Can you not consider me for care? We can basically basically remove your application, then consider you for general admission. Um, and then you basically have to pay the housing contract and then the additional thing. But the thing with that, if you are admitted for care, you have to be you know, meet the particular requirements for general admission at that, at that particular point. And um, the housing will be totally different as well as the classes will be different as well. You have to come for orientation to basically pick your dates for that as well. Okay, let's find another question that you got. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Somebody said that, hi, I was just wondering through the care department, do they help students find work in the community or shadowing experiences. Can you all talk about some experiences you had recently or if you plan on having any experiences in the upcoming years? Can you just talk about what things you plan to do? I think like Rose said, care connects you to departments on campus that allow you to do that. So mm -hmm. I was deeply connected by the Career Center, which has programs like the FSU Shadow, which give you most opportunities to connect with um, companies, employers, um, and also, you know, but most people in care have work study and it allows students to be able to get connected to working in care mm -hmm. or areas around campus. Um, I actually, I worked with the Institute of Family Violence Studies, mm -hmm. which like created the Resilience Project. And I got that opportunity because like my SSS scope advisor told me to, um, he suggested that I talk to my aunt who worked at um, one of the agencies back at home mm -hmm. and her boss or her supervisor like was connected to the um, to the director here. So it's like the network of people mm -hmm. that I went through, like just based off of his like suggestion, like I was able to work with the Institute of Family Violence Studies for two years and like create great trainings uh, and toolkits and stuff. So they really like do connect you with the different departments and like try to uh, suggest different things. And they always have professional development stuff going on. So there's always opportunities yeah. to go around. In addition to that, CARE actually hires 200 students in their department. So there's always opportunities for students 
to have a job while they're on campus, as some of you have been uh, mentioned, like your care ambassadors. Um, we have some care um, tutors as well as different things that in the care department basically help students right at the particular time to basically have you know experience on campus as well as possibly off campus. So moving on, so upon acceptance into care, how long do you have to make a decision? So you kind of go back when I mean, you're more recent, you just had your experience. Can you talk about um, your from decision day to you making your actual decision, like how long it could take you, and we'll talk about more like, when your final decision will be. Okay. Um, I'm guessing you're indecisive, and I get it because I was very indecisive. Um, before getting into any colleges, I applied to a lot, and, but I just wasn't sure if I wanted to leave my family. I wasn't sure if my mom was ready. I wasn't sure if I was ready. And so it took, I mean, I, when I read the application, when I read the decision, I was laying in bed, and I was like, well, like, it's official. And I saw care, and I was like, whoa. <laughs> so <laughs> it took me, I mean, I felt like as soon as I got the decision, like, in my heart, I felt like it was right, like I was supposed to be here. And so I, it took me about, hmm. well, I actually came on the FGen trip, and when I saw FSU, that's when I decided. As soon as I, like, got on the bus back home is when I accepted the, like, care thing. Yeah. But so it took me about like two weeks. Yeah. So I feel like whenever you get your decision, you'll know if it's for you or if it's not for you. Anybody else want to answer? Um, for me, uh, <laughs> I or I guess I won't speak about my general experience, but like here's what you can do if you are like doubting whether like FSU is like the place for you. Um, you can always just call um, the care department and we have people who are willing to speak to you and uh, basically like calm your nerves or like answer any questions that you have. Uh, we also have uh, guides and delegates. We have um, tours that you can schedule, which wouldn't only show you like the care department, but show you all of FSU. So it, regardless if you're just uh, nervous about FSU or like coming to care, uh, if you're nervous about coming to care or just FSU as a whole, like there are ways for you to um, kind of get around that and make your decision based off like what you need to know to like make that decision. And like once you know, you know. So <laughs> just try to be sure in yourself and like accept the fact that you belong here. Yeah. So in addition to that, the decisions for admission will go out on January 30th of 2020. You will have until May 1st to make your decision if you want to attend Florida State or not. There is a participation agreement that is due by May 1st. So you have basically have until May 1st to figure out if Florida State is a school for you. So, moving on, we actually just have a guest, but not a guest, or additional yeah. panelists come in. Um, her name is, maybe your name is, that's really your name. Her name is Rebecca, and I'm going to let Rebecca introduce herself and talk about things she's involved in our campus. Okay. Hi, my name is Rebecca Bear. I am a senior here at Florida State University double majoring in family and child sciences and sociology with a minor in business. Um, I came to FSU through CARE. Um, my main decision to go through CARE and go to FSU was due to um, CARE's Unconquered Scholars Program, um, which is a program that focuses on students that have experienced homelessness, relative care, foster care, award of the state status. Um, and when I met them my junior year, um, I met some of the Unconquered Scholars. I met um, Dr. Stark, I met Ms. Uh, Lisa Jackson, um, and a couple of other people that are really, um, put, uh, like, really important to that program, and essentially made me turn my decision from, um, you know, the rival school to uh, FSU. Uh, and since become, and coming here, I have been a part of so many programs. I'm a part of um, CARE's scope program. I'm a part of this, uh, I'm a part of, a, or I was a part of Southern Scholarship Foundation, I became a house manager, which is an amazing scholarship. Um, a part of Lambda Theta Alpha Latin Sorority Incorporated. Um, and I've been a part of SCOPE and a couple of other programs. It's been pretty great. So we have some more admissions questions. Um, someone asked, if I have my stepmother as my parent for the application and she went to college, but neither one of my real parents did, does that still mean that I don't qualify for the care program as a first generation college student? Mm -hmm. So. Unfortunately, you would not qualify for care because that step parents. Oh, so with that particular thing, so if she has a bachelor's degree, then you wouldn't qualify for care. But if your step parent has an associate's degree, then you still will be able to qualify for the care program. So it's just that bachelor's degree status because that step parent will be in your fast information. So that would disqualify you from care. So moving on. So someone else asked, is care lenient when deciding 
with ACT and <laughs> SAT scores and GPA. Example, if I'm one point off from my ACT, but my GPA is a 4.4, is it still possible to be accepted? My recommendation is to retest. Like I said before, there are multiple test dates that are left this fall. So their care requirement for students that don't know is a minimum 3.0 core GPA, a 19 composite essay, ACT, or a 990 on the SAT. Those are the minimum requirements. You have to meet those particular bases to be admitted to care. So you can't be one point off. And if you are one point off, my recommendation, there's three more tests that's left. Just retest, we super score, and we'll give you that highest. That's that's where you need. Somebody else asked, what term would I have to choose for the care summer bridge program? So it will be summer. So when you apply for Florida State, if you're applying to care, you have to indicate summer as your term because you are required to start in the summer. And then that summer term will lead you directly into the particular fall term. Do you spend every summer on campus as a care student? So, no. The first summer is required, but every other summer after that is optional. So if you want to basically take any summer courses, if you want to do a study abroad program, you can do that during the summer term, but it's not required for students during that particular time to do every summer. Oh, this is one for you. So, um, <laughs> do you only have classes with people in care? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but for the summer, yes, because it's all, well, not only with people of care, but most of them, you will have people with care in them. There's one that's diversity and justice, all of those people are in care. Mm -hmm. But then the other two, you will have some care students, but not all of them are in care. And then after that, since this is such a big campus, the odds of you being with uh, not, maybe even like one care student is very slim. My freshman year, so I did my care summer, I had obviously diversity and justice that we all take. And then I took uh, American history that was all care students. So it was specifically just for us. And then I took a computer literacy, which was a really big classroom. So it wasn't all care students, but there was a lot of care students in it. And then my fall freshman year that I picked my own classes, um, I actually had the opportunity to take my ENC 2135, like freshman English composition class with just care students too. So it was just like four care students. So that was cool also, but that's not very common, especially once you get into your major. I'll add on and say that um, throughout my four years being here, I have actually had almost every single class, I've had at least one to two care students in it. And um, I've definitely gone with them and created study groups and we've kind of just been able to bond on that note um, because I'm not big with talking in class. Um, so having those people in class to be able to communicate has definitely helped them. Um, so you like, like you said, you can have classes like throughout your um, experience with like care students specifically because sometimes care does open up classes for um, our students if like there's not enough classes in general, but um, no, but I feel like you're prepared to not have classes with care students. Um, it comes like as a shock at first because like, oh my gosh, like I used to seeing like all these people, where did everybody come from? And sometimes you might be the only like minority student in the classroom. Um, but once you get over that initial shock, like you have the tools and skills to like be prepared to interact with everybody on campus, uh, depending whether it's like in your college department, wherever the class is, and you know campus. So like you're good. Like you don't need to have classes with like all care students because you're prepared for that. Cool. So another admissions question: um, Do you have to be qualified for the federal Pell Grant in order to be accepted? Yes. So you have to qualify for the Pell Grant. For your on your summer FAFSA as well as the fall FAFSA for students that are applying for this upcoming school year, you have to complete 2019-2020 FAFSA as well as 2020-21, which is a mouthful. Um, so basically, you have to qualify for the Pell Grant for both of those years, and you basically have to qualify for uh, Pell Grant each year that you're in here as well to basically remain in here. Someone else all asked that what is the percentage or ratio of students that actually get accepted into the care summer bridge program? So CARE is actually one of our special programs here on our campus, so it's extremely competitive. We have limited space with CARE. So I can say this past year, we um, have about 400 or so students within CARE, and that number kind of stays around that particular mark between 400 to 410. But we do accept a little bit more students, basically kind of have that yield come in a little bit higher. So last year, I believe we received a little bit over 2,000 applications, and the, the things that go into our review process it was 6,000. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Uh, so with this application, there's a lot of things that go into it. So of course we look at your academic achievement, but we also look at your FAFSA information as well as your care responses. So those care responses and the FAFSA information you guys can attest to this kind of weight the most. So I can tell you as a care reviewer with your care responses, that can be your, your way into Florida State. So you have a unique story. So those four short answer questions can be your way into Florida State. So if your GPA isn't as high, or your test scores as a, as an aside, but you meet the minimum requirements for care, and you qualify for the Pell Grant for both years, you can still be admitted. My recommendation is to not compare your story to anybody else's. Do your care application and put your best foot forward, and then you'll receive that decision in January, and hopefully it's a favorable favorable one for you. Let's see. Do care students continue to live in the same housing in the fall? I wish once a <laughs> day. <again. laughs> <laughs> On your own now. Yeah, you're, um, yeah, you can live on campus. You can live in the apartment, SSF, yeah, uh, which is this. the yes, Southern Scholarship Foundation. Yeah. 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 So there's a lot of different options. Be prepared to find your own housing, though. Yeah. I lived. I lived. So my care summer, we lived in Dorman, mm -hmm. and then I ended up living in Dorman like my fall fresh, my fall spring freshman year. Mm -hmm. And even though it wasn't like only care students, mm -hmm. a lot of care students mm -hmm. lived there. And a lot of my friends were like even like next door and like to me too. So that was like nice because even though you're not all like you were before, at least it is a familiar face, mm -hmm. especially when you're like on moving day that you're like freaking out. I had a random roommate, so I yeah. didn't know what was going on. So it was it was nice to like see a familiar face. Um, adding on to that, I actually participated in the living learning communities at FSU. Um, I lived in a pre health dorm. So basically, anyone in my summer majors were able to live with me. Mm -hmm. my fall and spring semester and I took classes with them so it helped me get a little bit more adjusted to campus um, and find organizations to add on to and then I went over from Texas at and now I own a house so um, you know yeah, it's it's good. Good. Fine. so add on to that so with care with the summer bridge program you are required to live on campus during that particular time once the fall hits you can live on campus or off campus but with care there is a $50 housing deposit that is due with your care participation agreement for the fall and spring if you choose to stay on campus. If you don't choose to stay on campus, you have to find off-campus housing and you aren't required to pay that $50. So moving on, so one says, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as a care student, what sort of research opportunities and programs are available in your first year and future years? So your freshman and sophomore year, you have the opportunity to participate in Europe, which is the undergraduate research opportunity program. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting because I think me being a political science and advertising major, you really don't see a lot of like communications in research sometimes. But through the ER program, like they really inspired me, which I heard about through care, to kind of think about research in so many different classes as opposed to like the STEM majors or like the pre-health majors. Um, so I did a lot of research in like sociology, which was something that was really interesting for me. Um, something that I would have never done before if it weren't for the ER like program, which falls under like ONF or like uh, CRE, which is a center for research, I believe. But um, it's a lot of different opportunities. Europe is like the best, at least for me, my perspective. Europe is a great opportunity for your first time to kind of navigate research. Yeah, there's a lot of different research institutes on campus, and um, through like you know the whole story about my SS scope advisor, um, he connected me with all those different people, and so I've been doing research with the Institute for Family Violence Studies, which is in the um, Institute for Social Work Research, and that has been a great opportunity that um, isn't necessarily through care, but I got those connections through care. So on campus, there are a lot of opportunities for students to do research, whether it be through work study, um, year off. I also did uh, there's the social work under graduate research assistantship so like there might be different research opportunities within like your different colleges so i didn't do mine through your out but i did it through something similar um and you can do dis's and start yeah, with direct DIS. individual studies so, like with florida state being like a research institution like there's an abundance of like research opportunities oh, yeah. and it's like almost like oh you just have to find it really like yeah. there's so many opportunities for you to to navigate like that space yeah. and we'll care give you the opportunity to kind of find those Kind of hidden gems on our campus for research and all the different programs within here say hey we have a general body that's talking about you know research and are there opportunities for students in the yeah, about that. Uh, they may come to your pms <laughs> yeah. like yeah. i think i got connected to my campus to actually do like do your up because it was something that they were trying to recruit maybe members of like care to doing this you know research because it's not something that a lot of minority students even like consider as an opportunity yeah. because it's usually it's not something you think of right that's not front of my mind but like because of that it's made my like Collegiate experience so much more valuable. My degree is so much more valuable. We have like GPMs all the time about it. Um, we have uh, also the care ambassadors, like 
a lot of care ambassadors are leaders on campus. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's almost a requirement that you're a leader on campus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, a lot of us have done that research. And so we often tell our students like, oh, like I do this all the time, or mm -hmm. like this is what I work in. And we also uh, motivate our students to talk to professors and to the faculty members, uh, even if it's just going to the office hours, because you'll yeah. learn that if your professors, yeah. your TAs, mm -hmm. they have a lot of research going on and you can be a part of it just by stepping up and like saying something like oh i'm interested in this did you know that like i do research in this like it's just as it's just that easy so another interesting mm -hmm. question <laughs> kind of balancing the boat so what about the essay is that something you also look at heavily or is it just the four care responses so we look at the care response because you're completing the care application but let's say, for example, you're submitting your care application, you're very generic or you're very just kind of surface level. And your essay kind of has something in there that kind of, OK, we want to know more about this. And you write more about your essay. We can use your essay part of your review process. So we lean heavily on those four short responses, but the essay can kind of put you over there. So I have another question for you all. Um, what is being a first generation student? mean to you? How does that kind of motivate you while you're here? I think um, uh, during the summer we had one GBM that was about like your why, like why are you here at FSU? And so a big part of that from all of us basically is our families. Mm -hmm. And so being first generation, you come from a family that has not had this experience at all, that might not know how to navigate this, that doesn't even know, has never even seen an institution this big, mm -hmm. or doesn't even know like where this can take you. And so I think being first generation uh, specifically to me is like so important because it's representing my family and it's representing all those that are back home, like in my country or just around like the U S like it's saying that just because we are, and um, we, they never have these opportunities. Doesn't mean that I can't have this opportunity for myself and I can't represent them and give face for them because yeah, like they were never exposed to this. They like are immigrants. And so like ha being here, being born here was just a, a blessing in and of itself. And so being able to come to a university that's so big and just like give face for them and just pave the way for like everybody else that's to come is pretty awesome, yeah. Anybody else from the same So uh, essentially being first generation um, as well as adding on to that being foster youth, um, aging out of foster care, um, for me it really is about paving the way for um, those to come. Um, like. Uh, I've been there, uh, I've done a lot of uh, panels for foster youth and homeless students um, and people around the state of Florida to be able to see the kind of things that we do here at CARE, as well as being a CARE guide and delegate. I've been able to have um, people that are younger than me come up to me and say, I can get this you because I saw what you did with your experiences here and that's what I want. Um, and not only that, but I've paved the way for my little sister, my little foster sister to come to college and my little brother is applying now and just seeing as many um, people coming out of the system and actually wanting to go to college and um, just get the experiences that are similar to what I've had. It's just like been amazing for me. Um, and I hope to continue doing that. So just being at care and it's just awesome. So what exactly is the benefit of being in care? Um, like what is offered in care that makes your experience so great? Because I know there's over 20 programs of being care, but based on your particular opinion, what's the benefit of being in care? I think that if I would have just came here fall first day of school, I would not be here today. Mm -hmm. I think I would have been so overwhelmed. I would have no idea. I remember fall freshman year, I had already done care summer, and I was walking across campus, and I was like, okay, what? Like, you know what I mean? And even then, I had known stuff. So, like, I think that it's really overwhelming coming in as a freshman. Like I said before, like, I was really nervous. I was supposed to venture on myself. So coming into care and giving them, giving me the resources through the GBMs, the ambassadors, the people that I met, um, all the different things of financial literacy, like all that mental health things, all the things that we talked about before. Like if I wouldn't have come in, like started my like classes, like you know, like fall, um, without that prior knowledge and being able to like take that with me, I probably would have like been so overwhelmed and like not know how to deal with it like myself. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing for me was like the financial support that was given to me by CARE, that was something that I didn't even know that CARE offered until like the yeah. second GBM. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I didn't even remember like calling my mom and be like, oh my God, like, you're not going to believe this. Yeah. Because like, before I came first day, I, like, I, I have six brothers and I'm the youngest and before I came first day, I was like, hey y'all, like, I'm going to class, I'm not taking out any loans. And my family laughed at me. They're like, oh, okay, good luck. Like, that's not a possibility. Like, we've never seen that happen, right? And I think 
like care gave me the opportunity to do that. And I think uh, like just being excited about being a grad school Florida State with like no debt, no loan, that's an opportunity. As a first nursing student that I feel like like you don't get out of the schools and at a level that is at Florida State, you just don't get that. And I'm just so thankful for that. Honestly, cares popping. <laughs> like <laughs> think about everything. Um, honestly, like I, it's just it's. I <laughs> like, can't even put in the yeah, words. Like yeah. it's so like Karen cares about you like so much. Not even just in the academic academic aspect, but like in a holistic aspect. They care about your social development, professional development, mental health, like uh, physical health. Like we have we have like the different workshops and stuff. And I think like that's not necessarily something that you get everywhere. Where like it's not only about like what you can bring to this university, but it's about like, we want you to develop as a human being. Yeah. We want you to be the best person that you can be like when you leave here, because we know like that's going to make an impact on your life and the impact um, and an impact on like everybody else you touch. So it's not, it's not like one thing that I can say that care does that like really touches us, but it's like everything. It's the fact that they care so much about us as people that like they're willing to like, look beyond like what we're going through in the moment or like anything else that might be hindering our growth to like not necessarily fix that but give you the opportunity to like understand who you are understand what's happening and like grow beyond that so this was everything <laughs> yes. i remember probably watching this like what are these sashes you guys have on <laughs> and you guys talk about um, being a care student and being involved in different things and can you talk about what your sashes what you're saying and what's what's this going on this week um you basically kind of plug yourselves right now yeah. <laughs> when we introduced ourselves, I was like, oh, we forgot to mention we're on homecoming court. So uh, Caleb and I are on the 2019 homecoming court, and it's been a blast. It's, a yeah. Yeah. it's pretty exciting because also when I think about care, like, I don't, I don't think before care I was ever empowered to tell people that I'm a first person student, mm -hmm. but being a part of this department, seeing so many care students representing on homecoming court, seeing so many students in so many different areas, like, this is such an honor that we're, I'm, like, proud to carry that and, like, tell people about this program because it's just, like, so amazing, right? Like, and being part of the course is honestly. Yeah, honestly, like, <laughs> everybody I meet is like, what are you involved in care? Yeah. 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 <laughs> and so that's kind of like how it was with um, Homecoming Court. Like, uh, we have to go through like the whole interview process and applying mm -hmm. and um, being like a leader on campus and everything. I think one of the things I've pumped the hardest is like, oh, I'm a care student. Because yeah, like, they instill that leadership in us. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, you're going to be a leader. So just having that, like, being told to you repeatedly, like, care's got you, you're a leader. Like, we're like running stuff. So, I think that just made me more confident. Like, I didn't have the confidence to be on the homecoming court my freshman year. I was looking like, oh, my foster, they're like, they're it. Like, they got it. But, like, I got it too. So does everybody yep. else. Like, right. you just have to take the initiative, apply, mm -hmm. and, like, know that, like, you contribute something to this campus. And so, yeah. Karen did that for me. And, like, now here we are. Yeah. <laughs> and it's homecoming week. Yeah. So, and I think awesome. there's a level of resiliency that mm -hmm. comes with, like, people say you're part of Uncharted Scholars or Care. Like, I think there's a level of respect that somebody has mm -hmm. for you when you say you're part of that. Because they know that your first generation, like you've had these experiences that other people don't. Yeah. Gotcha. So moving on, somebody said right now I qualify for the Pell Grant, but at any point if I don't qualify for the Pell Grant, will I be removed from care? So you are in care for life. So once you are admitted to care, you qualify for the Pell Grant that first year, you are in care for the main time that you're here for a state. Someone also asked if I apply for care and I receive the Bright Future Scholarship. Following my acceptance into, into care, are there any penalties for me deciding not to pursue care or am I simply a general admissions student? So if you're admitted to care, you are a big care student. And if you call and say, hey, I'm not no longer interested in care, you want to be switched to general admissions student, we'll review for general admission. And then your, uh, your Florida uh, Bright Future will be applied to your particular financially after that particular. Do not do that. No, I have right no, futures no, and no. I have care. Listen, no, keep your right futures and care. Like yeah. it, it works together perfectly. Yeah. Honestly, please don't do that. So if you qualify for like right futures, if you're um, you have like an outside scholarship prepaid, that can be exactly. added on to your particular um, funding for school. So you basically want to you know kind of use as much money as possible yeah. to alleviate those take out those loans if you have to. And call if you have questions. Later. Right, call if you have questions. Yeah. yeah. Let's see what else we have. I think we already answered that one. Um, I got one. So what's the most important advice you would give a prospective applicant that's applying to care right now? I think for me, just like, look, keep your options open, especially when it comes like Florida State and care, because before, like, I, I didn't really do much research into care. I was just like, oh, this is a cool program that you can learn about. And I think... I remember talking to my sister about it. She was like, oh, like, you don't know what that's about. You don't even know how to program it. Like, the perception of what that's going to be like for you as a student. 
But the biggest advice I can give is like do your research, know about it, because like this is an opportunity that you won't ever get again. Mm -hmm. As if you don't go to Florida State and pursue that. So just you know, do as much research as yeah. you can. You are your biggest critic. You're probably the person that's holding yourself back like the most because like you may not think that you belong. You may not think this is a good, uh, good opportunity for you. I know a lot of our students like deal with like, imposter syndrome or like um, second guessing themselves like before they right before they come up here. But it's like you made it this far. Like the least you can do is send an application. Yeah. And once you get like if you get accepted, the least you can do is accept that application right. and like keep pushing yourself to do more because like you are gonna think that like. It's going to be a struggle. Like, no matter what your decision is, like, you need to be prepared to face some type of adversity and difficulty, but understand that, like, you're going to be able to push through it, and, like, we're here to help you. So, CARE is, def uh, is uh, very much so a family, and we're here to motivate you and help you out. So, like, whatever questions you have, like, Caleb said, do your research. Yeah. Like, we are not, like, afraid to talk to you or anything. I think for me, I was like, I don't want to bother anybody. Like, you know, if it's meant to be, like, I'll feel it, so on and so forth. But it's like, no, if you have questions, like, you have the right to get the answers yeah. to your questions, and you have the right to feel confident in your decision. So don't hold yourself back because you don't necessarily want to be a bother, which is a thing that we go through a lot where it's like, oh, like, there's bigger things to deal with. You are that big thing. Like, yeah. You need to own up that space and be confident in, like, your journey and your opportunities. I feel like too, um, like working in admissions, like people will ask a lot of questions, like just general questions or care questions. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, sorry, like I don't want to um, bother you. Like, oh, sorry, I have one more question. Like, mm -hmm. trust me, trust I me. love answering yeah, the questions. Yeah. Like, it's so yeah. much more rewarding mm -hmm. to be a student here and to like, like having seen myself like in their shoes and then like seeing myself now and like everything I've gone through. Like, I want to help people. I want them to have a similar experience to what I have. So it's like mm -hmm. we we are here to like help you. Mm -hmm. Stemming off of what Rose said, like I think if you've worked so hard in high school, just trust yourself, yeah. just be confident, submit the application, like write about yourself, like just be transparent, be confident, and you're gonna be fine. And when it comes to the application, feel free to ask anyone at your school to help you out. Like I didn't know in high school that counselors could help you out with your application. I thought you had to do everything on your own. Um, they're literally there to ask, um, answer questions, um, give you help and support, and like even tell you who to reach out to at any college. And so it's like. There are supporters there. If you don't feel like you have someone, just try to reach out to someone in the school and they'll try to put, point you in the right direction. Or even call up as you or yeah. find one of us somewhere. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, that's one of the admissions counselors. Like, when we go on the road, we meet a lot of students <laughs> that are really interested in the private care and say, hey, Mr. Williams, like, is it okay if I send you my care application, like, as a draft? Like, can you just give me some feedback? We can help you with that. So if you send us your care application, we can say, hey, you may want to fix this first answer. You know, you may have some grammatical errors here. We're here to help you, so we want to make sure that you maximize your potential and basically have your best care application um, once you apply. Don't be afraid to know it's on the road right. to success. Right. Yeah. So how do you become a care ambassador? <laughs> I guess I'm not going to that. Um, uh, so you become a care ambassador. So uh, first, you have to complete two years of um, like FSU credits. So you have to have at least 60 credits worth it, um, to apply. Um, you go through the application process, which is getting two letters of recommendation, completing like the three responses. Um, and to lead up to that, you have to be a leader on campus. Um, we have a lot of students that um, that just take initiative and like get involved on campus and that looks really good. It doesn't necessarily have to be in any specific type of department or any specific type of um, place, but like showing that like you know the resources on campus and you're very like well acquainted with everything that we um, that we offer is a good first step. So you do the application process, you go for a group interview, um, and then you go for an individual interview and you kind of like let get to get to know the panelists you let them get uh get to know you mm -hmm. then after the individual interview you go through like the training and stuff um and we have eight weeks of summer bridge versus like the students who have seven so we have like that that long week of training and everything and it is a great experience it's probably like one of my most rewarding experiences on fsu's campus because i got to connect with so many different students and i got to hear everybody's stories i got to see like resilience in in action like doing all the research for the resilience project like it was great like seeing that like in person like the students are just so resilient like it's so crazy um and you get a lot of connections with like different faculty and staff, uh, the different departments and stuff. Uh, so it's just an enhancing experience all around for the students and for yourself. So um, anybody who's like watching right now, um, when you make it here, I highly suggest you keeping it in mind for something to do because it's great.
So speaking on that resiliency part, most students actually don't know how resilient they really are. Right. Um, so they may think, hey, you know, I want Florida State to basically see how great I am in my particular schoolwork. But we want to know, like, what life challenges have you basically overcome to basically help you get to college? Because most students that are finding care are first generation. And that's a, basically a robot for a lot of students that they don't realize. So how can you basically get over that particular step of basically being resilient but not knowing how to put it on paper? Like, what tips can you give students on, you know, writing their best care application? I think you just have to be vulnerable. I think that's the most difficult thing. I think especially for men, just personally speaking, because I think it was hard to open up and talk about my experiences with my family and how that really affected me. But I think in doing that, it is when you at the mission office of reset essay, they're like, they truly poured into this. And I think that it takes me going to your guidance counselor, mm -hmm. going to these people that allow you to put like your experiences into words, mm -hmm. which I think is the hardest thing to do. Because just like, especially when you go through experiences, there's like trauma that you've Put in the back of your mind, you forget about it, you're like, whatever. But like, you have to put that into words and talk about it in, in a way that um, other people can understand because people can relate to it. Yeah, along with that, like with being vulnerable, I think that's very important because, like, the director of the program is reading every single one of these essays, like, he's reading every single one. And so, I think when you're reading it, you know if this person is being transparent, you know if this person, like, you just understand how they're feeling. Mm -hmm. So I think just just trust yourself. Mm -hmm. Trust yourself to write that down, to write your experiences mm -hmm. and just be vulnerable, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times like we think of it as like a sob story or mm -hmm. um, as minorities, like we kind of minimize our pain and be like, oh, it's not necessarily important. Like, you know, everybody goes through this, but no, like your story <laughs> is very much so important and special. And so recognizing that and being vulnerable is such an important thing. Um, so putting it on paper and honestly like, I, I have to say spew everything on paper, like everything you've gone through, like go down, go ahead, put it down, because you might think it's like such a small thing. And it's not necessarily about getting it right on the first try. It's about getting all of it out and then seeing like what what you want them to take away from your um, essay and your narrative. So like write the narrative that you want people to see uh, when they read your paper. Don't necessarily make it like all like my life is very sad because like you are more than that you are like the resilience in it all like you overcame it you are applying to uh like tier one research institute yeah. so like give yourself that credit and like top 20 university, top 20 top 20 university. Right, right. <laughs> so give yourself that credit and be sure to like just express yourself and make sure you give like them the narrative that you want to push forward and rebecca can you talk about your experience with our unconquered scholars program and how you kind of found that program in every particular campus and what things you put in your essay to basically find that resource Okay, um, so I found the Unconquered Scholars Program um, accidentally, kind of. I was a part of a program called Florida Youth Leadership Academy, and I was a project manager. Um, essentially, that program brings a bunch of foster youth around the state and come up with one big project for the year, and that year was to bring 600 duffel bags to foster youth. Um, and part of that program is they um, tour a school, mm -hmm. and so everybody took a vote, and everyone but me voted FSU. I voted UF. <laughs> um, and so I was outvoted, and we came here. Um, and back then, Unconquered Scholars was a little bit smaller, and so they came out to meet us at um, a hotel and did a whole bunch of activities with us and got to know us one-on-one -on -one and basically showed me what kind of family I was looking at going forward. Um, so when it came to the care essay, I don't think I talked about my foster care experience, actually. Um, I think I talked about my um, younger brother passing away and um, decided... And, and, he um, drowned. Um, so it was basically just talking about how I decided to be a lifeguard mm -hmm. and have my lifeguard licenses and CPR so that I can prevent that going forward. Um, I don't think I talked about the um, foster care that much because I was really ashamed of it. And now I'm like older. I'm like, I don't know why I was ashamed of that situation because that is something that has made me who I am today um, and being able to advocate around the state of Florida and actually the country now. Um, but coming into the Unconquered Scholars Program, because they help with literally anything. Um, so, like I said, uh, foster care, homelessness, relative care, and what are the state status. I have experienced homelessness and foster care. Um, and in foster care, uh, or in coming here, um, because Unconquered Scholars led me to finding care. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason I applied to FSU, the only reason I, I applied to um, care itself. Um, and I don't regret that decision at all. Like, this is my best like experience in my life. Um, and in the Concord Scholars uh, program, I found a family. All of my best friends are there. Um, we do road, we've done a road trip together during a um, hurricane. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, yeah. But we basically found a scholarship to help um, support us to go on a road trip to DC just because there was a hurricane and we brought seven Unconquered Scholars. 
Um, so I have, we have family, we have a family trip during, um, there's parents weekend here at Florida State, so parents come up. It's now called family weekend, so that it's considered family. Um, but the unconquered scholars actually take a trip out of town to, so that, um, because it's found that our grades decrease when we're on campus during that weekend. Um, and so we typically take a trip to Disney and it has like built the program up so much. And um, I was recently the president, but I stepped down, um, but it's amazing. Like, that's the experience of my life. <laughs> so we're wrapping up, so we have two more questions. I mean, so this kind of ties into like the care responses, but I guess what should one write about? one of my employers say it may not be one specific thing but it, like what tip or what thing kind of helps a student when they're writing their care app i think for me it was what most impacted me both coming to college and just taking just impacted my life but what changed my perspective in a certain mm -hmm. way and so for me it was, it was like moving and like being uprooted from like a place that i loved and i called home to coming mm -hmm. to florida and just the way I didn't like it. And so I think for me, like that completely changed my life because obviously if I didn't move to Florida, I would never be here. And this is one of the best experiences of my life. And so I think it's just um, about like realizing what has impacted your life in such a way that you are willing to talk to other people about and willing to admit that it's impacted your life in such a way that you want to take it further. Yeah, that's the answer to me. I, I, I talked about an event. I talked about my father passing away and how that transitioned to like, me living like a single parent household, which is something that I didn't experience until that moment. And I think that like having an honest conversation with how that impacted me and that, like like fresh off my soldier, but soldier, but realizing really how how much of an impact that I had was made that patient process. Um but the guy like help the guys counsel all those things a lot easier to write about it and you know talk about it even now. Like I said, I I personally say just like spew everything out and then like uh find to like find the call me or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um but uh so if your grades like took a dip at like some point, if you experienced something that like majorly impacted you like throughout your high school career, that like that's something that you need to speak about because it may impact like how your grades appear, it may impact like uh, what you uh, like how you dealt with things uh, throughout your academic experience or like why you might not be involved in uh, many clubs. Maybe it's because you have to work a, a job to support Race, your yeah, family. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you have to like stay home and raise family. In your family um so those are important things to talk about uh so if you can write the, those things down and like see like which one has impacted you the most like i personally spoke about like my immigration experience uh or actually i'll be honest i remember exactly what i spoke about in those four years ago but now like i probably would have spoken about like my immigration experience like my grandmother passing like certain like those are key things in my life that made it um that made me the person i am today so yeah yeah, and I think again, bridging to like how they asked if like the essay question and then the care questions. I used both of those to like explain my story. So I gave like my uh, essay question was about depression and about how my grades dipped mm -hmm. because of that and how I was fighting that. And then my care was something completely different. And so it gives them that whole rounded experience. So I think just talk about what has impacted you. Yeah. And going back to that question with the essay, the essay maximum word kind of 650 words yeah cares 300 yeah so your essay can give you more room to write about different things yes. you can't put in your care application yeah. and our last question kind of ties in the boat so if i'm if i'm submitting my short answer care responses am i able to go back and edit them yes you are but you would have to email the office of admission and we'll be able to go back in and update your care responses so if you um, want to reach out to one of our admissions officers say, hey i've submitted my care application but i want to update number two or number three you can basically send us a Microsoft Word document. We'll be able to go in and just copy those answers and then place it into your care application. But just keep in mind that that deadline for that is next Friday, November 1st. So make sure you have your final drafts completed by next Friday. Please don't wait. Please don't wait to the last minute. Please don't, because the website may crash. Yes. You might just be out of luck. Yeah. yeah. Happened to my cousin. And so yeah. I was I was the student that was 11:59 that was on the computer and That's I had right. the computer and. I tell everyone, don't do it, just do it now, it's fine, get it done. And if you're applying through one of those external applications like Common Apple Coalition, just give it 24 to 48 hours because we have the process of applications. So if you apply on October 31st and say, hey, the deadline is first, you may not get your application status checked until that following Monday. So just be mindful that you have to give yourself a two-day window to basically get your application stuff in. Submit it this week if you Right, submit it this weekend. So you have time, so you have a full week left to basically submit your applications. And we have one more question, or do we have one more question? 
from Matt. I think it's Matthew. Matthew, yes. Okay. 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 So is the economic requirement for care very strict? Like, do you need to meet the exact minimum? That's a great question. So you just you just have to qualify for the bill grant. So if you have that EFC number, if it's if you qualify for one dollar for pill, you will qualify for care. You just have to basically meet that pill grant requirement for summer as well as fall. So that's the requirement for here, exact minimum. But meeting the exact minimum doesn't guarantee you admission to care because there's other factors that go into your review process, like those care responses, your GPA, your test scores, as well as your essay and your resume as well. Holistic. Holistic. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> so, so if you have any additional questions, we're going to wrap up now because um, so our admissions website is admissions.fsu.edu. Our office number is 850-644-6200. If you want to get in contact with our care department, you have some questions strictly for care, their number is 850-644-9699. And their website is care.fsu.edu. But if you go to our admissions website, you'll see that special programs on the bottom right side. It says, Claire, you click on that, it'll take you directly to our care website. Any closing remarks from you all before we close? Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Right. <laughs> Be submit confident. It. Yeah, submit it early. Submit it. Be confident. And we're looking forward to having you all here, part of our FSU family. Can't wait to see you. All right. Take care. <laughs>